This video will review latitude and longitude as part of chapter one. We use latitude and longitude to locate positions on the Earth. Since the Earth is a sphere, we need two coordinate systems, one that measures north and south, and one that measures east to west. Latitude measures your north to south. It is the angle created between the equator and the center of the Earth. The larger that angle is, the larger your latitude. You can see an example of that angle being measured right here. Longitude is a measurement of your angle between the prime meridian and your location. The larger the angle, the further from the prime meridian you are. Here's an example showing both of them being used at once. You have 50 degrees east of the prime meridian and 40 degrees north of the equator. So you have two angles that have been measured, and that gives you this red dot, the location of this individual. Here's a similar globe with more detail involved, including all the latitude lines and longitude lines that are visible. In your reference tables, there are several maps that use latitude and longitude. Here's the map of New York State. This map has a large amount of information, most of which you may not have learned yet, but these lines connecting the numbers across the top and bottom are your longitude lines. They range from 73 degrees to 79 degrees. Here are the lines of latitude from 41 up to 45, and the two of them together allow you to do to locate coordinate system locations here in New York State. Elmsford is there, by the way. Here's a map of the world. This is taken from your reference table with some of the information removed, so the ocean currents or tectonic plates aren't visible, but you can see the latitude and longitude in the lines, uh, the numbers running across the top and side of the map. The green lines I drew in to show the equator running here across the center, it's zero degrees latitude, and zero degrees longitude over here on the side. This map is a little misleading because zero is here on the edge, and 180 is more in the center of the map. This area is the northern hemisphere, north of the equator. This area is the southern hemisphere, south of the equator. Any location in, those, in that part of the map would get that label. Here's Eastern and Western. Please pay attention that the Eastern Hemisphere wraps around and includes this small area here on the map. When all four are put together, you get a the four hemispheres of the, the four quadrants of the Earth, I should say, Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest. Okay, so the Earth is rotating, and we did some work earlier that kind of talk this out in class, 360 degrees, uh, it rotates in a circle in a, in a day. A day is 24 hours long. Quick math shows that that is doing 15 degrees per hour. Here's why that's important. That means every 15 degrees, you travel away from the prime meridian, which on this map, sorry, is here. You will change time zones. So you'll notice on this map, green, red, purple, green, red, purple, those are time zones. Countries can choose to participate in the time zones or not. It gets a little confusing when politics get involved. For example, China is way wider than 15 degrees, but they've elected to only have one time zone for their entire country. They should probably have close to four. Here are the time zones you're more comfortable with in the United States, Eastern, Central, Mountain, and Pacific. So to review real quick, Earth is a sphere. To locate positions, we take measurements from the center. Angles 
from the equator are latitude, angle from the prime meridian is longitude, and time zones are based on the rotation of the Earth. You might want to pause this and make sure you have this information in your notes. Thanks and keep studying.